I'm gonna let you finish, but this actually was the biggest match of all time. Two football mad households in Fair Stratford where we lay our scene. There was a grudge between two families who supported different teams. Romeo was a multi-generational Stratford City supporter. Juliet happened to be the Stratford yeah, United manager's daughter. Being rival supporters meant their families hated each other. But in their hearts, they developed a love like no other. Hi, kiddo. I'm William Shakespeare. You may remember me from being celebrated as the playwright Goat for penning such masterpieces as Macbeth, Othello, Hamlet, Twelfth Night, and The Taming of the Shrew. Or if your parents were 90s kids, they'd probably know these last three better as The Lion King, She's the Man, and Ten Things I Hate About You. Not even an inch, not even a tiny moat, not even in the smallest measure at all. Or for my collection of more than 154 love sonnets. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Or for literally introducing hundreds of words and phrases into the English language that we still use today like eyeball, lonely, and swagger. <laughs> However, the story I am most famous for is Romeo and Juliet, which I wrote as a love book. <laughs> this story is so timeless that it literally holds up 400 years after it was written. What people don't realize is that my inspiration came from two star-crossed lovers that I actually knew growing up back in Stratford upon Avon, England, which is where I was born in 1564. Ever since I met Romeo Montague at Stratford Kindergarten, come on city, he, like his entire family from the blue side of the city, had been fanatically passionate about one thing, Stratford City Football Club. And when I say passionate, I do mean obsessed. He would not leave home without his blue doublet, blue breeches, and he even wore blue hose. Over the years, Romeo had developed into quite the football player himself and had climbed the youth ranks to become Stratford City's new marquee striker. Now, on the other, red side of Stratford, lived a young Stratford United FC fan, Juliet Capulet. Glory, glory, Strat United. She took her fervent Stratford United support to another level and wouldn't leave home without her. United collar ruff, red feathered hat, and long red gown. Juliet was an incredible young footballer as well, and would soon be making her debut as a Stratford United centre mid. Over the years, the two households of Montagues and Capulets were both alike in their lack of dignity when they saw each other. They despised each other's teams so much that they insisted on going to different taverns, attending separate dances, and forbidding their kids from playing together. Now, kiddo, would you believe that in 1581, both Stratford City and Stratford United each won their semis to reach the FA Cup final. This was to be played at the Globe Theatre of Dreams, and pundits were calling it the Old Classico. This laid the scene for perhaps the most epic grudge match of all time. Think, Barcelona vs Madrid, Yankees vs Mets, Ali vs Frazier, or Yi vs Tay-Tay. I'm gonna let you finish, but this actually was the biggest match of all time. The tension was huge that day, and the match was proving to be an absolute cracker. Late in the game, City were trailing United 3-2 when Juliet was summoned off the balcony to make her debut. Romeo looked up, and time seemed to stand still as he locked eyes with Juliet in a moment of destiny. Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. Making her debut for her beloved Stratford United was supposed to be the biggest moment of Juliet's life. But she too was completely distracted and smitten by Romeo. She lamented, OMG, how doth my only love sprung from my only hate? Then suddenly the ref blew his whistle, and for the final ten minutes of regular time, United had totally parked the carriage, defending with everything they had. It had reached the 93rd minute in stoppage time when Mercuciola yelled to Romeo to break free, as he had pretty much been in Juliet's pocket since she came on. Juliet had suddenly lost her man. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Then Friar Toure won possession and put a through ball to the Earl of Harland, who held it up and knocked it to his left, to... Romeo! The city fans went absolutely mad. Maybe. Can we get Oasis back together? Definitely, maybe. Stratford City had just equalised in the last minute and taken the game to a penalty shootout. The entire city stood still, nervously watching to see which team was to be or not to be the champions of England. 
Just then, Queen Elizabeth made her way to the pitch and commanded the referee to cease the shootout. After witnessing this remarkable football match, I, Queen Elizabeth I, decree that there shall be no cruel penalty shootout to determine a winner. Let us rejoice that this match has been a testament to unparalleled skill and sportsmanship and shall forever be celebrated as a draw between two equally great teams, showcasing the true spirit of the game. Furthermore, I declare both Romeo Montague and Juliet Capulet shall be crowned as the joint man and woman of the match. I have also instructed Lord Southgate that he had better call them both up to the England squad, or else his next tour will be of the Tower of London. With that, the crowd went absolutely bonkers. There were United fans hugging City fans, and Capulets embracing Montagues. And so, as the story goes, the entire town of Stratford-upon-Avon continued to celebrate for days and days. Have you ever won a double, double, tall and double? And Romeo and Juliet's love grew stronger and stronger ever after. The Montague and the Capulet family saw how much their kids enjoyed each other's company and the happiness they found in playing together on the same team for England. They realised that their love and support for their children was far more important to them than any silly old football rivalry. After all, love triumphs when we choose to put aside our differences and embrace unity over hatred. So kiddo, for Romeo and Juliet it was, all's well that ends well. Which, by the way, is one of the phrases I literally came up with. And yes, I realise this was a little bit of a different ending to the version I ultimately wrote. But hey, everyone in showbiz knows that drama sells. So I decided to write it as a love. If thou hast enjoyed this journey of mine tale, I beseech thee to graciously bestow thy click upon yonder subscribe button below. Knowest another youth who'd like the tone? Share, good friend, the love with them too. Moreover, I entreat thee to traverse to our noble website at www.starrytime.com and there you'll see how tales can be crafted specially for thee. Guten Morgen, James. Hola, Olivia. Good night, good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Thanks for listening to my Starry Time. <laughs>